everybody. I am Ginger Wolf and welcome Stripped Finance. This video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. I am a feature entertainer and stripper, not a financial consultant. Please speak to your financial advisor about any financial matters. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Why a students work for C. Students book summary. Lesson 1 Solid Financial Education Adapts to Students' Experiences and Needs What is the best time to teach a child about finances? There are no hard and fast rules. Generally, a child can distinguish between $1 and $5 after 5 years of age. After that, they are ready to begin their financial education. The Financial Education Process Includes three different learning windows, each with its own requirements. From birth to adolescence, a child has the first window of learning called quantum learning. At this age, a child is a learning machine. It comes naturally to them. By the time you are four, the brain begins to divide into two distinct parts. The left hemisphere, which is said to be part of a larger analysis, and the right hemisphere, which is the creative side, of art. Generally, children prefer one hemisphere to another. Parents can use games like Monopoly to teach their children financially about this change. Games stimulate both the left and right hemispheres so that no matter which side your child likes, his or her learning centers will be encouraged. The third learning window, professional learning, is where young adults begin to experience the real world. As they grow older, they will use the lessons they learned from childhood. At this point, we decide that we have chosen the right path for the job. How do you choose the right job? Is there a way to help your children choose the right path? Find out in our next Understanding Lesson 2 Finding Your Place in the Cash Flow Quadrant is more important than choosing a career. In school, you don't learn how to find the right quadrant. However, it may be one of your most important decisions. Each quadrant in four quarters is identified by a letter. The letter E represents the employee, that's where most people are. The S represents a small business or self-employment. People who work for the commission or pay such as doctors and lawyers, can be considered employees of the commission. The B book represents big business, entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs who build companies that employ hundreds of people. Finally, I stands for investors and financial analysts like Warren Buffett. Section I does not include idle investors investing in pensions and 401k. S. Schools prepare children for the S or E quadrant of life. Students are encouraged to study hard to earn a solid salary for a good job. It is in these two quadrants that the largest tax burden is carried. Quadrants B and me pay less in taxes. Only those in these two categories can seek real Financial independence. The education system has a problem with training students to become experts in certain fields. While this may be helpful in ensuring success in quadrants B e and S, achieving success in quadrants B and M requires different skills. A successful businessman or investor needs to be an expert, not an expert. The world revolves around absolute, right or wrong passing or failing. It is very common for students to become professionals working on quadrants E or S. A student who gets a C may have skills in some areas that enable him to see the big picture. Therefore, stud S work for C students. Lesson 3 Explain to your children the difference between a standard, a portfolio, and an idle income. 
There are three types of income, regular, portfolio, and transaction. Students are often taught only how to work to earn a living, regular, solid. Checks. Taxes are levied on all income, even savings accounts and 401k. Schemes. Another reason why you should educate your children about. Taxes. Everyone has a lot to learn about this, so the sooner they start to understand it, the better. Most investors put their money into portfolio income or cash profit. The tax. Burden and risk are still higher than normal income, however. It is rare to find a portfolio that is really different, as people tend to invest in the same companies. If one goes down, the others may follow. Inactive income is also called cash flow. An asset can be easily defined as anything that brings you money. Debt is anything that consumes your money. Houses are often misinterpreted as assets when they are actually in debt. Real estate is rental, such as residential buildings. Income from this source is taxed at the lowest rate. Your financial independence will be earned through income, as you might think. Learn about the reward for doing nothing through the monopoly game in the game you have an ongoing income plan when you build houses or hotels somewhere this is important for victory holding on to your money and not investing in real estate will result in you losing money your children will have money in the future if they know about the three types of income however school plans cannot work for them most Teachers earn a normal salary. Teachers are experts. Many are unaware that there are three types of income. Therefore, it is the parents' responsibility to provide their children with an education. Lesson 4 Financial education provides a sense of control and security for young people. Many people leave school with little or no financial education at all. They will do anything to protect the well-paying job if they get it. The main concern of many CEOs is their parachute retirement packages, rather than their companies. This is because schools are failing to meet one of our basic needs, safety. Psychologist Abraham Maslow came up with the hierarchy of needs in 1943. In his mind, food and shelter are at the bottom of the pyramid representing our basic physical needs. Maslow asserts that it is only after these basic needs are met that we can move on to more advanced needs, such as security, love, respect, and self-realization. The second level of Maslow's hierarchy is security and includes employment, conduct, property, and resources. By dropping out of financial Education, schools are failing to meet this requirement for their students, who are graduating with uncertainty about their future and in need of work. This causes desperate people to resort to despair. Many people believe that rich people are greedy. Wealthy people are portrayed as bad in books such as Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, which is read in every school. Greed is actually the result of hopelessness. The feeling of privilege born of despair is the opposite of the spirit of capitalism. Wealthy people, however, can be generous in a unique way. What is the best way for parents to meet this need for safety through education? As your children begin to work, instead of encouraging them to work part-time, encourage them to look for opportunities. Young G people can Get a sense of control over their financial future by using these simple ideas. In order to achieve real self-realization, we must first feel secure. Lesson 5 You should not give money to your children. Parents, no matter how wealthy they may be, have a tendency to spend money to show their children that they love them. Eventually, they will buy their children cars, too, and expensive sports shoes. When children see this all the time, they learn that they only need to ask for what they want. And they will get it. 
Their friend gets the latest game system, so they think. He should get it too. Schools also do not help to combat a positive attitude. During today's school competition, every participant receives a trophy simply by appearing. Does this teach children anything? Are they winners by appearance? Money should be well explained to children. It is an exchange tool. That's all. You get something in return for what you did for me. The more you give, the more you will receive. When a child receives a handout, it develops in the right sense. Establish a plan to reward hardworking children instead of giving them a weekly grant. With the return of excess beyond what is expected of them, they receive more. As an added bonus, you can also discuss the idea of giving to them. By exchanging time and effort, they will gain more than just money, experience, and education. According to the proverb, give the man something to eat, and you will eat. For one day, teach a person to support himself for the rest of his life. Before giving a gift to your child, ask yourself, do you teach him to fish? Do you teach them to ask for fish? Lesson 6 Teach your children how to distinguish between financial advice and financial education. It is always a good idea to ask yourself, what is in them, if someone tells you what to do with your money. An advisor may suggest separating your stock portfolio. However, no one really knows what stocks will rise and fall. They do not really give up because they will get their job no matter what. The bank that urges you to save money wants you to apply for a mortgage and mortgage. The bank does not make any money from your savings. They make money on your debts. When stockbrokers and banks take advantage of your financial ignorance, you are all customer. However, if you are financially educated, you can keep these benefits. The word income is one of the most basic in the language of money. When a person buys property, such as a rental property, he or she will be able to clearly see how his or her income increases. Similarly, it is easy to see how debt can reduce income. It is a common misconception that debt is bad. We've been adjusted since we were little so we can avoid it by all means. Debt can sometimes be a crime. You can also take advantage of the loan. For example, if you take out a bank loan to buy a mortgage, you may be able to repay the loan and increase your income. This makes debt an asset. Final summary. We all wish our children well. By educating them about personal finances, they will be able to make that a reality and will reap rich rewards in life. However, we cannot depend on others to do that for us. We as parents have a responsibility to teach our children about money. Hi guys, I'm Ginger Wolf and thank you for making it this far into the video if you have the time. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe and I'll see you next time on Stripped Finance. So in the meantime, I believe in you. I know you can do it. Just keep on grinding, okay?